Hello and welcome back to the Stronghold. We've got Zendikar Standard very rapidly coming to a close with the pending release of Kaldheim. That means we've had about four months now with our new player experience decks that came out in August. And we have had four months to draft our collection and build in various directions and concentrate our strengths where they needed to be. So now is a great time for us to take a look at our decks and our collections. And today we are going to talk about what I believe are the top five decks that a budget free to play or new player experience should be putting their efforts and energies into to build in order to have the most competitive stance they possibly can in arena. But before we get into all that, did you know that the majority of YouTube viewers never subscribe to channels, even the ones they watch the most? So allow me to take this opportunity to invite you to subscribe to the Planeswalker Stronghold for all your new player, budget, and free-to-play needs. That way, you never miss out on a thing. Welcome to the family. Now you know in every one of my videos I've got to give you a little extra value, a little more bang for your buck. So instead of this being just a top five video, uh, of course I have thrown in uh, one additional video, kind of an honorable mention here for us to talk about, and that is the five color shrines deck. Now this one is kind of a tough sell from a budget perspective uh, because there is very little content here as far as the meat and potatoes of the deck that comes to you in your new player experience. Um, this is really a deck where I think roughly 60% of it has to be drafted. Uh, but the good news here is that almost all of the cards that you are going to want to draft for this deck come out of the M21 set, which should be a draft focus for new players because of all the good baseline content contained within it. This is also a deck that gets much better in the historic format with the addition of more shrines. So go ahead, draft the cards now, you're going to be glad you have them for years to come. And if my prediction of a potential shrine cycle in Kaldeheim comes to pass, this deck has the potential to be really ridiculous even at the standard level, not even thinking about historic. And before we jump into the main deck list, Matt wants you to know that all the deck lists are in the doobly-doo down below. Um, so make sure to check that out after the video because you're going to want to stick around through the video uh, not only to get the deck list, but the understanding of why the decks are performing the way they are and why I recommend them. Plus, I've got some additional bonus content for some other decks in your collection at the end of the video. So first up, the number five deck I think everyone should be building from a budget perspective from 2020 is Mono White Ginger Brute, or uh, as some people sometimes call it, Enchantment Beatdown. Um, with your new player experience, you've got two copies of All That Glitters, and that's about all of the foundation that you get for this deck from your new player experience, um, with the exception of like some pacifisms and things like that. Um, this deck is monocolor, so it takes all of the pressure off of your rare wild cards um, and allows you to save those for other things, principally for cards that will have value for you in Historic. All of the cards that you need to draft for this deck are very easily drafted. They're good cards and you will use them in other decks and other places for years to come. Great investment. Next up at number four is Blue-Green Mutate. Uh, this is a deck also that does not draw strongly off of your new player experience cards, but the overall power of this deck is really undeniable. The uh, Sterix is probably one of the best uncommons in the set or uh, in standard right now. Um, building a deck around this is just kind of a no-brainer. And while it doesn't draw heavily upon your new player experience cards, this deck drafts 
entirely from Ikoria. So it is something that's very easily put together, even without a lot of focus. Um, with focus, you could probably build this within about five drafts. With no focus, you would accidentally build this deck probably within 10 to 15 drafts. Uh, so almost a no-brainer deck here. Similarly, the Boros Cycling deck is another one that really sadly does not draw strongly upon your new player experience cards, but again drafts nearly entirely from the Ikoria set. So at the same time you're building this, you're also building Mutate, kind of getting double duty out of your draft funds. Every time you slap down 5,000 gold to draft Ikoria, you're really working on these two top tier decks that uh, not only are going to do a lot of work for you in standard, but both have very high potential in historic, particularly the, the cycling deck here, as there are so many more cycling cards in historic and so many different ways and directions you could take this deck. This is another one of those. If you draft the cards now, you will have them for years and you will not have to spend wild cards on them next year when you decide, oh, hey, this is a great deck. And now we're getting into the top two, which rely much more heavily on your new player experience cards and lean into that portion of your collection far more so. Uh, at number two, I'd like to talk about Green Blue Be My Plus One. This deck is all about synergistic counter accumulation on creatures to make them huge it very often will come in on turn three and turn four and smash for huge amounts of damage bringing your opponent uh, on turn three on turn four into the single digit range it makes it very easy for you to close out this deck uh, nearly half of this deck comes exclusively from your new player experience cards um, and really you can use even more than half the rest of the deck is very easily draftable and synergizes with the Conclave Mentor Signpost Uncommon from M21. And of course M21 is going to be one of the sets you want to draft early on because of the uh, nature of the cards within them. The core set always has uh, very good staple cards that you're going to want to add to your collections early, even more so than some of the more focused uh, theme-driven sets. And last, and certainly not least, is my pet deck, and the number one deck I think you should be building from a budget perspective is Mono Red Bombardment. This deck really has it all. It builds almost entirely out of your Mono Red New Player Experience deck, and with two common and two uncommon wild cards and some other staple cards that you got in your new player experience other decks you end up with a highly synergized very fast playing very consistent very reliable deck um, this is my main farming deck so far for this year um, I'm tracking it at somewhere around a 65% win rate and it only gets better with a few upgrades when you have the opportunity to do so. Um, you will see the Ginger Brute in there that we are using in other decks and all of the cards that you are putting together for this are really truly staples that you will use for years. And of course the most important word, phrase, and thought of advice that I can give you as a budget player is don't use your wild cards frivolously. You really want to save those for adding key cards that you will use in Historic for years and years to come. Uh, don't get lulled into building a short-sighted standard deck that might not be relevant in two weeks. Um, the list that you've been looking at throughout this video are my personal versions of the deck based on, of course, my collection. Um, if you don't have particular rares or particular pieces of the mana base, simply use what you have. Um, you don't necessarily need four copies of Sea Dasher Octopus in the Blue Green Mutate deck. If you've got it, great. If you don't, just use what you have. Similarly, if you don't have four copies of Fervent Champion for Bombardment, don't worry about it. Just put in 
another one drop uh, probably something out of your new player experience I can't remember the name off the top of my head but there's that goblin that when he gets blocked he replaces himself that is a great substitution to make um, and as your can your collection continues to grow you can add the champions in later and let's not forget that the focus of this video is decks you should build um, let's not forget that we still have a lot of decks in our repertoire that are still good but don't require a lot of effort at this point to continuously improve or rebuild them. For those of you who aren't quite familiar with what you're seeing on the screen right now, um, I use a deck organizational system. The green is the decks where you should be putting your effort and your focus, the decks you should reach to the most in order to finish your challenges and get your daily wins. Uh, those with the yellow gold background are decks that I feel like aren't really performing just yet but have a lot of upside potential between now and the end of the rotation period. The red decks, however, are decks that are dead to me and I really believe should be dead to you. Uh, I'm putting almost no effort into those, uh, but always keeping just a small one eye on it uh, to see if something later in the season might give it a little more oomph or the meta might shift and bring one of these decks into a better position to perform. While decks like the red-green Stomp Stomp, the white-black life skills and the white-red company of knights don't require a lot of time and energy. These decks are pretty good right out of the box and definitely worth playing. Uh, the life skills and company of knights have slid a little bit uh, on my particular rankings mostly because what I feel are factors within the meta. Um, really that could shift back and these could be at the very top of the list the very next time we talk about it and all three of those decks deserve upgrades as your collection grows. Now as for my tier 2 decks uh, things like the blue white skies and the mono white life matters deck um, are things that I think kind of suffer from uh, budgetary constraints and things like uh, card selections that are available to us within the limited scope of a budget player. Uh, very similarly, uh, the Rogues deck kind of has the same issue. Um, things like uh, Devotion and Wizard, similarly, they're decks that are on the cusp and it really wouldn't take much to push them over the top, but they're just not there yet. Uh, these decks still deserve some attention and still deserve some effort and some resources uh, of your time and energy, but really only after the top tier green caliber decks uh, have been fully addressed. Uh, I would not sink a lot of resources into these for the time being, but um, if you have maxed out what you can do, with our top tier 50% of our decks, this is where you next want to spend your time and resources. When it comes to new player experience decks like uh, To Adventure, the Massive Menagerie, Aerial Domination, and Mutation Station, these are all new player experience deck lists that I have literally deleted and stopped using. Uh, I strongly recommend that uh, for my new players out there and my budget players as well. This is really deck lists that are lackluster and there are better deck lists that you can be running. Uh, if you are still reaching to those decks to finish out challenges and things like that for color reasons or whatever, uh, I strongly suggest that you look into some of these alternative deck lists. I think they are really going to increase not only your play performance, but also your effectiveness and your return on your investments of time and energy. Once again, keep in mind that the list that you're seeing in this video are my current versions of the deck based on my own collection. If you are brand new or don't have the collection growth that I have had at this particular point in time, by all means, look back into my older content and you will see versions of these decks that are far more driven towards the new player experience end of the pool. Um, 
I tend to build those deck lists using almost exclusively cards that just come from your new player experience and don't require you to have drafted nearly the list that you are seeing now. So be sure to check those out. Now with all that having been said, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It's the budget way to support the channel so we can reach more of our brethren out there in the new player experience, free to play, and budget community. And until next time, I'll see you in the arena.